Around 80% of the ocean is unmapped, unexplored, and unobserved. That is a mind-blowingly huge amount of the planet where we just don't know what's there. And there are only so many marine biologists and engineers. But like we're seeing in everything from driverless vehicles to chatbots and video games, artificial intelligence has the potential to do many repetitive and complicated things better or faster than us humans can. And it seems that deep sea research is no different. I'm meeting two experts who are going to show us how artificial intelligence is changing research in the deep sea. So I know it's really easy for all of us to get stuck in this doom and gloom mindset about the oceans and about the environment, but I know you've got some pretty high hopes for how AI is going to help us find some new solutions, right? I do think there are definitely some things like artificial intelligence that will allow us to scale up our capabilities for observing, uh, especially life in the ocean. So I'm curious, where exactly are we at now with what robots can tell us about the ocean and where do you hope to get in the future with AI and machine learning and things like that? So what robots allow us to do, right, is, is get to places that we as humans can't get to. There are many challenges that humans face going underwater, but pressure might be the biggest. Our lungs hold about the same amount of air as a soccer ball. At 300 meters, they'd be crushed to the size of a tennis ball. And if you dived to the Mariana Trench, they'd be squished to the size of a pea. And one of the ways in which right, the robots can be really helpful is that we can do really quick observations, generating data, either imagery or video, right? Noting all the animals that are there. But where I think we're trying to go is to use robots to say something about animals, not only if they're present or absent, but also their behavior. What can we learn and understand about their movement to help perhaps one day predict where these animals might be? and how that relates to the environment around them. I've been reading up a little bit on this ML tracking project, and it's a fantastic example of how we can use machine learning in science. Can you tell me a bit about that and what it does? One of the challenges that machine learning tracking is trying to solve is you know, providing this capability for scientists to observe an individual animal for as long as possible. So this is a, an awesome example I love to share. The blue circle indicates the animal that we're currently tracking. And what you'll notice is that animal we're tracking, which is originally a salp, uh, winds up being bumped into and visited by a squid. And then that blue circle uh, transfers onto that squid. So that's what we're tracking now. And then shortly after this whole thing happened, that individual squid then is joined by a whole bunch of its friends and somehow some way we're able to restore tracking on the original individual. But the problem is from like a robotics perspective or mission perspective, right? We don't want to lose tracking on that individual animal. And so what we're trying to do, right, is be able to have smarter algorithms, right? Smarter vehicles that can distinguish between different kinds of animals or different kinds of objects that we want to study and have that information then um, inform what the vehicle is going to do. And the way that we're able to do this is thanks to a massive database called FathomNet. We're able to aggregate this information and then train algorithms to distinguish between different animals that might be underwater. And so what that looks like is not only can we have these vehicles right, go off and track something, we can now have vehicles that are smarter, that can go out and search for animals that we actually want to study or learn more about. And so this video I'm about to show you um, is, is a field trial where we're doing that. We're demonstrating these ML tracking algorithms. And uh, the top left indicates what mode the vehicle is currently in. So it's currently searching for a snot palace. A snot palace is a common name for the mucus structures that larvations build. A larvation is a free swimming invertebrate, which makes large mucus nets to capture nutrients that are suspended in the water. As the uh, vehicle gets closer to the object, uh, if it matches the class or the object that we want to study, you can see we transition to acquire, and once it's been verified, we are now autonomously switched to a tracking mode. So imagine someday we can have these robotic vehicles go out and search for animals that scientists want to study, or even search for animals that we don't know very much about. And that's all being enabled by artificial intelligence on these robotic vehicles. Now we focused mostly on the engineering challenges, but I wanna find out more about how this is being used in practice. Over in the UK, Carrie Howell is a professor in deep sea ecology and a pioneer in this technology. It's great to meet you, Carrie. Can we start with a quick summary of your research? 
So we map life in the oceans. And we do that by basically looking at where animals like to be, the sorts of environmental conditions they like to be under. And then we can use complicated maths to then predict where else those animals are likely to be. And that allows us to produce modeled maps of vast areas of, of deep ocean for which we just don't have any data. We use things like, well, autonomous vehicles and also uh, remotely operated vehicles as well to go down to the seabed and film or take photographs of the animals that live there. So how much data are we really talking about here? And what's the difference between a human and a machine learning tool analyzing this data? A single AUV dive of something like 22 hours will return over 100,000 images. And that's where artificial intelligence comes in. We get the machines to try to identify the animals for us. And that makes that process very, very much faster and means that as a biologist, I can then take the data, which is what I really need, and start putting it in my mathematical models to make my maps. So if I'm understanding this correctly, it allows you to produce highly accurate maps without necessarily surveying every location? Well, that's the real trick. Um, and it comes from having enough data to train those models to know that this is a starfish, or this is a crab, or this is a fish. Uh, and even more detailed than that, very specific species of starfish. And so we need those large training data sets to make the models work. And some of the uh, work of the FathomNet program is absolutely crucial in that. So collecting all of those annotated images together in one place that come from different laboratories so that we have a big enough set of data to enable us to train models so they work really, really well. The future is looking really exciting for this sort of work because actually what would be even better is if we could put that AI on board the vehicles themselves so that when those vehicles are out in the ocean and seeing uh, animals and taking photos and video, that they are interpreting them on the fly. And that means that when those vehicles come back to the surface, they have already got the data. So a scientist can be presented with a data set instead of lots of images that they then have to go back uh, and process. Just a reminder here, the usual scientific model is to collect data, analyze it, and then present your results. But what we're talking about here is doing all of these things before the robot even gets back on the boat. Beyond that is actually having vehicles that can respond to what they're seeing. You can imagine if you have uh, an autonomous vehicle, it's gone to a site to check a map. And the vehicle is able to take a photograph, know if it's seeing, the animals that it thinks it should be seeing. And if it's not seeing the animals it thinks it should be seeing, it can alter its course to go to another location on the map uh, where that habitat or creature is predicted to be and check that location instead. What I really wanna know is, can this help with marine conservation? Well, maps are really critical for making decisions about what you're going to allow to go on where. So if you think about it, if you're being faced with putting a new wind farm in or an oil and gas platform, you know, one of the first questions you want to ask is what, what's potentially the environmental impact of, of allowing a development to go ahead? And so at the basis of that is, well, what's there? What habitats are there? Uh, what animals, how sensitive are they? So these maps are really important for making decisions about how we spatially use our marine environment for uh, the benefit of society um, and the wider world. The maps are also really useful for making decisions about where marine protected areas should be. So if you thought that AI was only for chess computers and smart speakers, think again. AI is also setting sail to explore and help protect our fragile deep sea.